Hi there, this is Kathy Crow, and here I am back at the Crow Cottage. Thank you so much for watching and for sharing my videos. I appreciate it. I'm going to move my hand over here to get my thing going because I'm hoping I can see comments today, ladies. I um, am so sorry that I have, I've been missing them because I didn't know I had to do stuff over there to get them to keep going because I, I see one or two and I think, oh good, it's going, and then I... I didn't realize um, Facebook has changed it to where I have to keep scrolling or I don't see them. So that's why I've been missing them, but I'll try to remember. I don't know that I will. I get busy doing our, my cards and enjoying that. And, and I just, I don't, I look at the message and I think, oh, well, there's not a new one. Well, there was, they just were <laughs> below the area I'm looking at. Today is going to be so much fun because I have a really cool project in in mind, but also because I was away for a couple of weeks, I've got loads to <laughs> loads to tell you. It's just like, oh my goodness, so much happens on a vacation. It's fun, fun, fun. Um, I am gonna. I do have a host code up here. If you uh, make any purchase at all, I will send you um, at least a packet of ten free cards per fifty dollar purchase. Um, I will put more in if your order is more, but right now the best deal is celebration. You get all kinds of free things. Of course, their free things started to run out. The tree lot dies. I'm so sad to say is gone that I warned you. I warned you all. I told you that is going to sell out fast. It actually lasted longer than I expected. I thought it would possibly sell out within three weeks. I snapped it up super fast. <laughs> actually have an extra one of the tree lot dies. And if anybody joins me by the end of September 1, um, I will be happy to uh, give that to you as a bonus for joining my team. But you do have to get the starter kit to do that. So there you go. Now, here are some of the things that are available instead of what they had run out of um, for some of the celebration things. Ah, they added so many really neat things. I'm so happy they added the uh, timber embossing folder. Um, actually, they ordered, they did three embossing folders, the timber one, the gingham one, and the seashells. All three of those are classics that I'm going to be using no matter how long they keep them in their catalog. Those are ones I will always use. The Flowers of Home goes, I think, with the Blessings of Home um, stamp set. And um, so the, the dies are available. If you have a $100 purchase, you get those for free. And that's you know, that's, um, I'm going to just say, I lo looking at how many st dies are in that set, that's got to be a $45 set. Um, they're expensive. But uh, what I got, there's the daffodil dies. Oh, the aspen tree dies. Oh, I've got to just show you this little flyer here. So the aspen ones are down here on the bottom. And um, I love that. That one is also a keeper. I'm going to be using a lot. The craft boxes, but they also, and the dots and spots uh, embossing folder, which, um, you know, that one is a really good one if you want to make a mask. Um, I've had a hard time figuring out how to use it. When I used it, I wasn't really happy with my results. <laughs> I'll just be honest with that one. That one is great for the people who like to do a lot of abstracts and artsy stuff. I'm I'm pretty literal, you know, so um, that one I'm having a harder time with. The silver foil and the brushed metallic. So they're giving you a package of silver foil and this brushed metallic. And um, oh man, that stuff is really, really cool. So I'm keeping this up here in my desk so that I can refer to it when I won't place another order because of course just today I saw that I am getting low on my old olive cardstock. Can you believe it? All right, so I'm gonna put this down on my desk and I'm hoping that I can see what I'm doing when I get it all positioned over here. Uh, it's always difficult for me to see exactly what you see and, and make sure, I've gotta get my I'm going to have to plug in my phone. I want to make sure I don't run out of juice partway through everything. Oh, it comes over here. Hold on. Let me 
<gasps> this is te technical difficulties. There's really nothing else I can do about that. Okay, there we go. So if it's not bright enough, I will add some light. We've got quite a bit of light coming in from my window. Um, here's my, my host code if you want to make a purchase. Oh, I forgot to get my... Ah, oh, good, it's under here, my other board, because this white and black is kind of unfriendly to the glare, sort of unfriendly to my window. Um, let's see, what else do I want to do here? Um, trying to think, what else do I need to tell you? And I, while I'm doing that, I'm trying to center it all so I know exactly what you see. Okay, I think we're good. Yes, Old Olive, I ran... I'm, I'm not out, but I try to make sure that I'm not running out either. All right. Um, it just seems so weird that I've been away. But only away two weeks, and I did do a couple of videos. They probably were very substandard because when I am doing this live with you, I am definitely um, better at what I'm doing. seems like when I'm doing it just on my own, uh, you know, more stuff happens. I don't know. Stuff happens when I'm doing this too, but um, I try to keep a little bit more on task with what I'm doing. So we have 15 more days of celebration. Celebration means for every $50 you spend, you get a free item. Um, $100, you get bigger, nicer, usually, not always, but usually, uh, item or two $50 items. So the more you spend, the more you get. This is a great time to stock up on a whole lot of things. Today I'm gonna do this Leaves of Holly stamp set and I'm gonna combine it with this Daisy Garden because I wanted to I wanted to talk to you about the Daisy Garden. Now I cut out in this Leaves of Holly set there are some really nice dyes. I love the, the, the leaves. I already have holly leaves, but they were cling stamps. And they were really nice, but they weren't exactly as nice as these. So I thought, meh, I suppose we'll go ahead just for this label and buy this. And I'm so glad I did, because look at this label. Now this one's a little torqued because I, I got a splotch on here somehow, uh, just a teeny tiny, and I tried to erase it and it, uh, you won't even be able to see it, I <laughs> probably on the, because I think I got it pretty good. I I just went ahead and wet the whole thing down, just trying to get that off. I mean, I, it's it's imperceptible, and I but I don't think my label that goes on here is going to cover it. So that's why I was fussing with it. That's why it's kind of torqued. It actually it does. I didn't even need to mess with that at all. It does cover it. I didn't think it would because this is fairly small, so you're not going to get. You know, on this, you won't get a lot of your sentiments, but on the little one, you will get all these little, little ones easily on this little white. You can do that in white or something. But it gives you this background that you can do as a solid color. Actually, it goes like that. And then, oh, no, it doesn't. It does go like that. It's just that I've got it upside down. It goes like that. And then um, the the label itself has all the little intricate stuff so you get a double easily can do a two color thing thingy my husband likes to tease me with my poor vocabulary skills as in thingy is actually a word i tend to use i think the older i get the more i use it that is the sad thing the bigger your vocabulary gets sometimes the worse your speech at least for me it has been so what i did I'm gonna show you how I did these. Aren't these beautiful? Um, these are some of the nicest leaves I've ever stamped. Um, I am using these today, uh, not for for not just a Christmas thing, because this would be these holly leaves. If you've ever been out in your garden and looked, holly leaves are beautiful all year long. That's one reason people really like hollies. So we're gonna do it with Daisy Garden. Daisy Garden is its own little set of of interesting intricacies. So we're gonna talk about that. First of all though, before I get into all of that, just reminding you, celebration only lasts 15 more days, so don't miss it out on it. Join our team. There are all kinds of perks you get when you are a, a demonstrator, a hobby demonstrator, doesn't have to sell anything. You can be a demonstrator who likes to sell things if you want to, but um, most people don't. Most people just want to be a hobby demonstrator. When you are that, you get to save a lot of money 
money on your stamp sets. You get to be part of our team. We do a lot of fun things. Now, uh, Stampin' Up! is actually going to do World Card Making Day on October 1. And um, uh, yes, World Card Making Day is a thing. Didn't know really much about it until a couple of years ago. And um, so anyway, Stampin' Up! is going to do it. So that's cool. Now today we are going to do, first of all, I want to do Daisy Garden. And I am going to stamp it two times. I'm going to stamp it with my, you can see I've kind of been playing with this piece. So I'm going to position it this way. I think this is a very big background stamp. I, I hesitated to buy it because, um, you know, we have so many wonderful papers available that you really do not need. You see how big that is? I can't even get that on two. I can get two on one sheet. So we're going to go ahead and put it back over like this. I'm going to I'm gonna stamp it right up here in black memento because I wanna to talk to you about what you're gonna get when you do this. So I could use my Stamparatus. I did the first time I did it because usually these big background stamps do not easily cover in one push. They usually have to be lifted and then inked a little bit more and pushed down again. This one I've discovered is inking beautifully on one go. Now, because I said that, watch and see if it holds true. Because usually if you say something on the video and then you go to do it, it doesn't actually do what you just said it was going to do. But I think it will because I've been having no trouble with it at all. So let's let's have a gander. Um, okay, so I just inked that up with that Tuxedo Black Memento ink, and I'm just, you know, applying your standard pressure. I am not pushing super, super hard, but I am making sure that I'm pushing in the middle. That's oftentimes where it that breaks down when it doesn't ink up. Now, see how well that inked up? Now, I over-inked a tiny bit right there, but I'm not going to worry about that. All right, so I did want to just show you that 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 this stamp is inking really nicely has a great you know it, it impressed every line really well I'm, I'm very happy with that i am going to do another one with embossing but we're going to get to that in a bit i want to talk to you first just about coloring this um, because it has so many lines, and I don't even know what kind of, I'm a flower fiend. I had a garden, before we moved here to Missouri, had a garden with more perennials in it than anyone I knew, because I didn't know anyone who was a professional gardener. If you were a professional, then you would have had, you either would have had more than I had, or you would have worked with more than I ever worked with. So I'm not professional, but I did have a whole lot of flowers. And um, I suspect this is a Rudbeckia uh, because of the way the center is. Um, it reminded me, I don't, it, it's probably not because I think it has too many petals, but it reminded me of my Osteospermin. Now, if you, if you're Osteospermin, sperma, I forget, it's been a while. We've been here in Missouri for about a, a little more than a year now. And I'm so happy to say that I do not miss having a garden too much, a little, not too much. But I do really um, miss my osteospermin. They're very pretty. They come in all different colors, especially that pale yellow they came up with not too long ago. But I was thinking, you know, I think this flower will look really nice with my Christmas stuff. It's a daisy garden. It says daisy. Daisy is a, you know, the name of a flower that they put on like all kinds of different. I mean, it's a huge uh, genus. So it comes in lots and lots of colors depending on what kind of daisy like it's not your traditional michaelmas daisy it can be any kind of daisy they're all kinds so you know if you did a white one that would look really good with christmas but all of these lines make that problematic i was going to do that at first and then that was a trouble and then i thought well if i want to do yellow because i if i want to do my osteospermin i would need yellow so i got out my um daffodil delight pencil and started in on that but that was just too dark right 
Okay, then I pulled out um, a, the lightest pencil, Nameless Variety, and that one actually does quite nicely. Now, if you use your, um, if you, I do have something else that I actually prefer to use for this. It's a watercolor sort of thing, but it is not watercolor because this is too much black ink and I wouldn't, I wouldn't put a lot of water on here. If you used waterproof paper, um, your watercolor paper, you would, it would be fine, but it still is going to be, mm, yeah. So this works just great. Your pencil is going to work just fine. Um, let's just have a little look at our pineapple punch. We used to have, do I have pineapple punch? Maybe I, oh yes, there you are. Okay, we do have, a we used to have pineapple punch. It's not available anymore, but let's just see. The trouble is that this, um, is a lot of black. It shouldn't go on your pen, but sometimes when we have so much black ink in a space, I mean, that's a lot of flowers. I end up kind of messing up my pens a little. Now, I am going to not, I'm being judicious with my pineapple punch uh, just because there isn't, I can't get anymore. This is a retired color, and I would have to go to my Copic pens to get this color right now in the Stampin' Up! world. But this is the is almost the darker pineapple punch probably is more the color I'm looking for. So when you're coloring it, my advice is go from the outside in. Don't go from the inside out unless you're only doing the very center and you're not getting anywhere near the end. Because what's gonna happen if you go this way out a lot, you're gonna get careless and you're gonna start seeing little things on the edge of those petals sticking out into the white where you don't want. So when you're coloring, um, my suggestion is try to go from where the white is that you don't want any of this ink on, try to go from that edge in. And then you're gonna have a lot more luck with your coloring and not be going out of your lines. You can then, when you're doing that, use your fatter, fatter edge. See, I can come in, if this was a better pen, what right now this pen is getting kind of worn and you can see some black on there, can't you? I didn't have that when I started. I don't think. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I don't want any black on my pineapple punch. I don't have a lot of it to spare. So I'm going back to the pencil. Now I am not gonna get as great of, you know, um, um, oh, I shouldn't say great. I won't get as vivid a color with my pencil as I would with, I'm not gonna do all these, don't, cr don't cry, don't, don't think, I can't stand watching her do everyone. We are not, I'm only, I'm only demonstrating this with this color. I'm not even gonna use this on our card because we are actually gonna do a, a Christmasy card. But I did just wanna talk to you a little bit about these flowers and coloring them because I've done a bunch of these uh, in different stamps and they can be problematic. Now, I looked and looked for a purple because the purple I need is this shade. And um, I couldn't find my Highland Heather. I was pretty sure I had a Highland Heather purple pencil. But I, I'm i not seeing it. I've got, I, you know, I keep telling myself when I put these in, Put the, put them so you can see which ones are the Stampin' Up! pencils and which ones are not. And um, I'm thinking I don't have a Highland Heather pencil. Oh, you got to be kidding me. So I'm going back to, okay, so we're going to put this in here. Here's the other thing I discovered when I was doing it. See how this is looking muddy and not nice? If you want to put a different color with, because of all the black ink, because of that, it would be different if we didn't have so much black ink. 
because there's so much black ink, use your darkest color first, right on that white, so that you can see it, for heaven's sake. Because like now, it's gonna look muddy here, because I didn't do that. Yeah, it looks a little purpley, but not enough. I want it to look really purpley. So I should have done that. Now you could also, sometimes they're even on the edge. Mm -hmm. I really like it when they do that. Sometimes they are. These osteospermans, they must, um, they also I think are called African daisies. Um, let's see, what are some of the other daisy-like flowers that are out there? It's been a while since I browsed a nursery. Kind of gave that up when I didn't need to anymore because I wasn't buying any. Jeff put a, a nice trash cover fence kind of thing around where our trash is, which looks great, but it needs some bushes in front of it now. And, um... So I am going to be visiting a nursery before too awfully long. But anyway, so I'm going to just do that and then doing this. Now, I am going to want to say that if you had joined our team, here I am back to this again, you should because um, I actually know of a secret watercoloring tool that I cannot mention here because it is not a Stampin' Up! tool and it's really, really cool for things like this. Now for most things I use my Stampin' Up! blending pens. They work beautifully. The great thing about the Stampin' Up! blends that I'm going to talk to you about a little bit later when we do our Christmas daisy is that all of those alcohol pens blend really well, but when I start bringing in foreign substance, you know, alcohol pens, because I want more variety of color uh, than Stampin' Up's offering, I sometimes have a very hard time getting those to blend properly. You have to know what blends with what. And uh, these are all just little tips that you get when you're on our team, but you have to be part of our team. Okay, so that is that. I'm gonna finish discussing other things about this stamp as we do the other one. Um, all right, so I'm gonna set this aside. I'll finish this later. I'm not really sure I like that yellow. It's not looking very osteospermy. <laughs> that doesn't even sound nice, but anyway, that's what came out, so I'll just leave it at that. Um, African Cape Daisies, that's what they are. African Cape Daisies. They're really pretty. Now, the paper I want to use with our daisies today is what the paper that goes with the set of the uh, uh, leaves of holly. It's called Bows of Holly, very conveniently. And this is the background that I want to use a fair amount of. I love this side. It has the same leaf that we're doing, but this is absolutely gorgeous. Now, all of this paper is, oh, for Christmas, look at you, look at you. I've been using this, as you can see, there's just an abundance of very, very nice, nice, nice papers. So, Bows of Holly, you, oh, look at that. I haven't even gotten to that one yet, but I do really like poinsettias. And um, I do have some poinsettia stamps, and I think the Bowels of Holly, does it have a poinsettia on it? I don't think it does. No, it doesn't. Um, I think the decorated, decorated with happiness set, set has a tiny poinsettia on it, and it's pretty cute. But I have some, I already have some nice poinsettias, but I just thought, well, since I'm not seeing a poinsettia stamp that I really want to buy this year, um... This paper is a very nice substitute for that because it's already got some very nice and you can just cut around those and just use those. Oh, my deaf people just drove up. That is gonna be noisy. We are gonna have to just cope. They are getting our deck completed. Yay, and I'm so happy. I thought it was gonna be done before we even got back. I was really hoping it was gonna be done, but it was not. What is this on Facebook? I'm looking. I understand that. Let's go on to see what is going on here. What are you doing? Okay, nothing apparently. All right, we're all good. 
so let me put this up that's way too close all right so got my pad of water out here i am going to show you what we're working on we are going to work on this cool little folder card i've got a little pocket for a gift card i've got my macy's deal going in there just because i didn't have a gift card to throw in there but it, it's a big enough you could make this pocket big enough to do tea in and do a tea set this is just a nice little folder card i i like this style quite a lot it's sort of a variation on the um, joy fold and which is one of my favorites so i am going to need to figure out though what my dimensions are and we're going to use, let me see what I've pulled out. We're going to use, I've got um, uh, Mossy Meadow, Real Red, Green gr um, uh, green Apple. What is it? It's Apple something. Green, is it Green Apple? Um, and this is actually Pear Pizzazz. I, did, I do have the Pretty Parakeet, which is our new one, but it's really, really bright. And um, Granny Apple Green, that's what it is. I'm kind of... I, I have a lot of granny apple green, so I'm just using that. So let's see what our dimensions are, shall we? And then we'll get started. And then we'll do the daisy and we'll do all, all that stuff. So ca World Card Making Day, remember, October 1. If you join our team, you get to be part of our group. Um, actually, it's on a Saturday. I don't think I'm going to be able to to do that, but other people in our group probably would, and you could probably join them. Now this is an 11 inch piece that way, and I'm suspecting it's five and a half this way. Indeed it is, which makes it very handy. So you're gonna use, you know, almost a whole sheet here. You're gonna put it at five and a half, right here. Let me put this, this is upside down. This is generally how I cut things. <laughs> is upside down. I don't know why. I I do not know why because the measurements actually are clearer up here. So I don't know, but that's me. So five and a half by 11. And then we're going to turn it. Doesn't matter which way you turn it. And let's see what these measurements are. I probably have it written on here. No, I don't. I bet I do on another card that I've done. I did a few of this style. My deck guy left. He came, he drove around, and he left. What's he doing? Oh my goodness, he probably, they went to lunch. I hope they're coming back because they're not anywhere near done. This is three and a half, and I believe that's seven and a half. I've gotten some stuff on my ruler. I'm not sure what happened there can't see very well. I need to clean my ruler. All right, three and a half, and yes, seven and a half. So you're going to score. And the other thing I like about this is that the um, measurements are very standard. So three and a half, score. And we'll pull our arm out. And seven and a half. And score and then there you go there's this is your little folder card all ready to go now you do want this this is going to be your pocket all right so you don't want to get rid of it let's see how big our pocket is our pocket is going to be a half inch bigger than this piece which is three and a half so we want it to be four inches so four inches and this one we only want it to be a quarter bigger so it's instead of the two and a half that's showing, we'll do two and three quarter. So four, do I have two and three quarter? I do. So we're gonna tr cut two and three quarters off here. Throw that away. And by four. And then on all, now you, this is still an extra piece. We'll hang on to it because we'll probably use it. Now I'm going to just do a one quarter inch um, score on all three sides, not the top, just the three sides. Okay, so there's one there and one here. The um, Stampin' Up! also has, they've got a bunch of, while I was gone, they did a bunch of stuff. They added some kits. They're really cute. They added a cottage, or um, 
Oh, what were the kits? They added, where are they? I wrote them down. Anytime. Oh, yeah. Cozy and Bright. That's the latest one. Cozy and Bright. It has an orange, um, little orange circle, you know, circlet things that are, oh, I don't know. It just made me smell. Orange. Me smell? No, it did not make me smell. But it made me think of all the cinnamon and orange scent stuff that I, that I love at Christmas time. It's a Christmassy one. And then they also have that. They already had it, but it reminded me that they have a bunch of really cute kits that I always forget about. They have this um, Best Remedy, which has a really cute little skunk in it. Now let's cut out the little corners here and here. And then we'll just assemble our little pocket right now so that it's all done and ready to go. They have um, Robot Buddies, which is a really cute set for kids. All of these kits are very reasonably priced. If you ever want to do a kit with me, um, just go online and purchase it um, through me, and I will see that you have done that. And then I will contact you and ask you if you want to do it um, with me live. And we'll just do our own little, our own little kit class. It would be really fun. I would enjoy doing that. So anybody who will ever wants to do that, feel free. Now this is going to, you know, um, I'm going to glue this. I'm not going to glue this down. I want this to be a pocket. And, and so I actually want to glue this to my card. So I don't know why I'm even getting my glue out because I need that to be a pocket. I'm going to set it aside because I do not know what DSP I'm going to use yet on that. So this, this is, I don't, this, I'm working on this. This is not the, what our card's going to actually look like. I've gone ahead, in fact, I'll talk to you more about it later and colored the daisies that I am putting on this card. And um, we are still going to do an embossed version because when I finished with this, I just thought, hmm, for Christmas, I think I would like to have a shinier embossed version. But uh, we'll go ahead and get the basics. So this card, you can see I cut out those poinsettias from this paper, and uh, that paper works really well just to do that. All right, so saving the pocket. Now, I've got our card base. Um, I guess I could put the pocket in here. Let's peek and see what I think. See, I'm not going to want red on red. I'm going to want to put paper under there, so we will still save the pocket. All right, now I do have, if you want a fancy, fancier edge than this, my, my dot, this is going to be large. In fact, I'm going to do a little trim trim here and, and get a little of it off because you can see it's kind of hanging over a bit and I don't want it that big. This would be a really good autumn one too, don't you think? I think autumn would work really well, but um, I, I wanted to do red and see how that worked. So I want to show you how I did that um, with our blending pens in a moment. We also have the, a magnet board that's really cool, um, and I really like that too. Oh, I forgot one thing with the World Card Making Day, they've decided to do, if you buy, there's three bundles that they're going to highlight on that. Again, it's October 1st. If you choose to do that, the, um, oh, I want to, I think I want green, not red behind here. So we'll get out our paper. Let's. Grab out some of my paper. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put this one, I think, on the back side of this one. There and there. I'm just gonna look and see if I really, really think when I was looking at it, I thought that was gonna look good. Hmm, yeah, I'm not quite so sure. I do hear some kind of rattling going on outside. Maybe the maybe the deck guy just parked away down the street. No, nope, need green. I don't and I don't care for their camouflage green in this this one. That, that one, I'm not, not super fond of. We're going to put a little gate, uh, I mean a little belly band on this too. This will be, help it to hold on. All right, so this piece is three and a half. Is it really? Yes, it is three and a half by the five and a half. So that means I need a three and one quarter by five and three eighths. So let's go with the let's go with the lines going up and down. 
So we're going to go three and one fourth by five and a quarter. Well, that should be the right size. Let's see. Yes, it is. Perfect. And then we'll do the same for this inside part here. But it's slightly wider. Let's see. This one, no, uh, it's not. It's three and a half. Okay, good. So three. Three and one quarter, again, by five and one quarter. And then that will go on that side, very nice. And I probably will use one of those for the pockets, I bet, on the inside, don't you think? Anyway, so they're gonna use the Cottage Rose Bundle, uh, Cottage Wreaths Bundle, or the warm, Welcoming um, warm, warm welcome bundle for their ca card making day on October one. And you, 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 you won't be unless you're a demonstrator. You cannot access it. Um, it's going to be on our demonstrator page. That anybody who wants to be, again, you can just be a hobby demonstrator. No, no e expectations or guilt for not doing whatever it is you don't want to do. And. Um, and then you can access it because they're going to record it and you'll be able to see it later even if you can't do it, which is how I'll be doing it apparently. And it, which is handy too because if our team wanted to do it, ladies, if you want to do it with me, then we could always set up another date to do it and we could watch, watch it at the same time. All right, so that is a... Anyway, if you get, I forgot what I was saying. If you get one of those sets this month, I think it's just this month. No, it must be through September because you can't even register for this until September. So it must be that if you buy one of those bundles in the month of September, you get one free package of iridescent jewels uh, for if you buy one of those three bundles. How, you have to get the bundle, but if you do, you'll get a package of free iridescent pearl. I think it's the Pearl Basic Jewels. Very pretty. All right. Stick you right there. Mm -hmm -hmm. There we go. All right, all lined up pretty good. It's a tiny bit crooked there, but a little tug will probably rectify that. Okay, that is that. Now let's clip this. I'm gonna use this one, but I am going to do the embossed one. So I wanna see how that works. I think that's gonna look really nice. I'm gonna kinda make that leaf a little snug because I want to cut off this one side. And what I did with this is I colored the leaves with old olive, both light and dark, but left the tips white and then went over with the light mint macaron to get the leaves to look multi, multi. I hear drilling going on. That is a good sound. <laughs> Very good sound. Man, I've been waiting for that deck to be done for a while. So that's going to be nice because they kept telling me it was going to get done. And then, of course, they're very, it rained. And we were glad to see that it rained because it was really dry looking here. But, oh, it's nice and green now. Beautiful. Now, he, I, you can use this part on the inside of your cards. Don't lose it. Hang on to it. But doesn't that look nice? It fits on there much nicer. We'll cut the bottom off because that's way too long. And I want a nice straight cut, so I'm going to just lay it on here with the stems being down on that one quarter inch line. We'll cut off those bottoms. And then I can do this. Voila, just like that. Now, I did a petal pink background underneath that because you can just go swoosh, 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 swoosh. If it goes into your color, it doesn't matter. And I'm gonna, sh I, I'm gonna do a different color. I'm, I, I don't, I've changed my mind. I don't wanna do another Christmas version. So I'm gonna show you what I did. I used cherry cobbler. Now, cherry cobbler cardstock 
and I think it's Mossy Meadow cardstock are out of order. I mean, out of can't be ordered right now. I people are making all their Christmas stuff, but it's just the cardstock. The pins are good, so I used Cherry Cobbler and just went at the base out and then a line around each not each petal just one on each petal trying to get all the background stuff like if there's a petal in the back you want to get that one okay so i very judicious with the dark 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 um, then i took out my poppy parade and used just the light one and then colored everything else all the other petals with that and then to get the highlighting on there you can take your uh, light petal pink. Now this is what I'm going to talk about uh, as far as our Stampin' Up! blending pins. Um, make sure you use your bullet tip, the smaller bullet tip. This is going to take away and blend at the same time. So you see how it leaves me. You want to go where it's going to be hitting the light more. So wherever the petal is up, you know, when you're looking at this design, this is curved, so this is down, the tip is down, but this top part would be up closer to the light, so that's the part that should be lighter. Do you see how that, let me bring it down more so you can really see how this takes away this color and blends it at the same time. So you're not getting just a big splotch of... Um, you know, of uncolored cardstock showing through. It actually blends, and that is not the way with all blending pens. Uh, different inks react differently with with their family. And uh, you can look at it and think, oh, it's a very close match to this. You know, my Copic pen's a very close match to this Stampin' Up! pen, and I Stampin' Up! doesn't have that color. So this is what I've done. I've used it and then done this, trying to get that lighter version right here on the top. And then it won't blend. It just streaks and does weird things. Not all, but some. So it's a matter of figuring it out if you're using those other pens. Or you can just stick with your Stampin' Up! pens. They all are going to blend really well with each other. I haven't had very many fight. We had Pink Pirouette um, a while ago. It went really good with that Rococo Rose. But it tended to fight some of the other colors and didn't necessarily blend all that well. So I was not, so, although I like the color, I wasn't sorry to see that pen go. But right now, I don't know, I've been, I don't think I've found one that doesn't play really nice. So there you go. This way you can get all of that nice highlighting without having to do, you know, watercolor. Because, I again, you are not going to want to do watercolor with this much black ink on here. Now, I would really like to have my tips white, but I did those on another card and it, I don't know, it just didn't have quite the right effect, so I'm not going to do that. All right, so that's all I'm going to do with that. I did the center, I took my um, old olive and dot, dot, dotted the dark and then dot, dot, dotted the light and then took mint macaron and just colored all the center that way because I kind of like the flowers that have those green centers they look really cool and then we're gonna I'm gonna just I'm gonna stick this on here now if I'm gonna have a belly band it's got to be secure on there because that's gonna be going on and off quite a bit I don't know that I really want to do that I did want to do a belly band I think I'm gonna end up instead of doing a belly band I am going to do a ribbon and then I won't have to worry about all of that nonsense. There I do. I hear drilling. <laughs> that is a good, good sound. Really good. Like, I was not, ha I'm not, I, of course I want them to go in and have lunch and rest and enjoy. <laughs> They'll be better at working. But on the other hand, the guy told me, I told him, we're going to be gone on vacation while you're doing this. And he said, that's fine. We don't need you there. And, um, you know, I thought, okay, great. And he said, we'll probably be done by the time you get back. And I thought, sweet. And, and then it sounded like everything was progressing. And 
but there was rain while we were gone and it must have been a lot because it did green things up really well. When Jeff and I came back, by the time we hit Nebraska, we stepped out in the morning and looked at each other and said, ah, feels like home. <laughs> it was a little tiny bit muggy and it felt good. It felt like home. It was nice. Actually, it was cool. We went to Nampa and Boise and it was quite quite hot. So it actually felt good to get home because it, it, it's cooler here in Missouri, or at least it was. When we were gone, it was cooler here than it was, which is kind of ironic because I thought, you know, when we move here, it's not a big deal. We'll, we'll go in the summer. We'll go visit our family in the West and enjoy their nice, cooler, more pleasant environment, dry, you know, even if it's warm, it'll be nice and dry. Well, the reality is, is that Springfield has really nice weather. And yes, it's a little bit warmer, not warmer, it's cooler. And it is, it is muggy at times, but nothing like muggy. It is just a little bit moist. I think being older, we just don't, doesn't bother us so much or something. I don't know. All right, let's make sure none of my dyes or none of my, I got a little dimensional off the edge there, but for the most part, it's right on there. Okay, very cute. And now let us do, let me grab out another sheet of white card stock. And we're gonna do a little bit of embossing. Let's see how that works. I want to do it. I saw somebody do this with some gold. It was really pretty. So let me see if I can find some gold in here. That's a really good gold. I've got silver. Of course, when I'm looking for it, I can find all the colors. Here's gold. Okay. Got the gold. You need a piece of paper. Boy, that's going to be difficult. Huh. How about if I just use the back of this. I don't have a piece handy at the moment. And we need our Versamark. And anything else? I don't think so. All right. All right, so we will do this. Now, you could do this on black, and that would be really pretty, wouldn't it, with your gold? Do it with black and then use your white chalk writer to do the, you know, white, whiten the petals. I think that would look really neat. And the leaves. You could do it on green. Maybe I will. Maybe we'll do two of these. We'll do this on white and we'll see how that looks. And then we will do it on green and we'll see how that looks. This month too, and in fact, until September 10, if you order a paper pumpkin, they have their Halloween paper pumpkin out. Looks, looks up really cool if you're into kit type things. All right, we'll do this right here. Get that pressed good. You don't wanna not have it embossed really well. All right, now we're gonna move a little fast. Now, you do wanna be really generous here with your powder. This is a big stamp. So I'm gonna just pour it all on here. Oops, I didn't mean to get off of that. And then, I'm gonna shake it so that it gets on every bit of my image. Oh, you know what I forgot? I forgot my embossing buddy. Ah, let's see what happened. Actually, miraculously, it looks fantastic even without the embossing buddy. I see a speck or two, but hardly any. All right, now I did manage to get some powder on my stamp, which is a no-no. 
Now, you don't have to worry about your embossing powder getting wasted. You're going to just pour all of that right back in. It's actually, of all the uh, tools we use, it's a very... I'm not going to be able to use that cardstock very well now, but I'm going to need to get another piece of my paper, too, because I don't want to mess with all that. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got embossing powder all over the place. You know, I've done this neither. I don't know. I do it on camera. It's always a big mess. Um, I do have a tiny bit of... There we go. Get that out of there. All right. Let me, let me grab a wipe. I don't know about you. I don't like glitter all over me. I go downstairs after I'm done doing this. And I'll say, Jeff, I'm done. And he's like, oh, okay, good. And then I can come out now. <laughs> And, um, and then we find glitter, like forever, all over everything. Glitter, glitter. This glitter is not so bad, but some glitter. This is, embossing glitter is not as bad as regular glitter, is it? Okay. Now you'll have to put up with my sound. With the heat tool. Ah, it missed there. That's all right. My label's going to be there anyway. Come on. There you go. Yeah, this is going to be really pretty. And I forgot to brush away my little strands of excess, but I don't think it's going to matter. There's so much gold. I don't think it'll matter a bit. Now this is going to be really pretty. I'm going to like it. And I'm, I'm doing this because I want to show you how much easier it is to color when you emboss. You have this much ink on any stamp that you want to color. You're going to want to emboss it. It just it ends up saving you so much time. I know this is a step, a step you might not want to do time-wise, but seriously, coloring can take quite a lot of time. Um, anything you can do to kind of save some of your color time can be worth it. I'm getting a little close to my paper, but I'm trying to rush here. I think that one doesn't look like it's got quite enough color on it. It's looking flat instead of gold. I'm going to make sure I got it melted. Okay. There we go. That's pretty hot. Nice. Very nice. Yeah. Um, if you used it on white, I don't know. I don't know. I mean black. White on black. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure that that would look good. Okay, I might have to try that one on my own. I'm looking at it, and you can see where a bunch of my ink is not golden. It's just brown. And then here's all this stuff that was nice and gold. Um, that's because I was cheap throwing out my powder. I should, I've got only half of a, of a container here, and I really should have put out the whole thing onto it and not been chintzy. You really want to cover it really well and then give it a shake. Make sure all of that, those really gold flecks ad adhere. And, um, and then the whole thing will be very, very shiny because not all of mine is. Some of it is just brown. All right, let me clean off this stamp. I'm telling you a whole bunch of stuff that I'm, I'm sure you already know, but it's things that um, sometimes when you're just starting with stamping, you might not know. And you might wonder, why, why does that person's stuff look 
you know, different than mine. And it's because she's doing, she knows things that you don't know. And I'm, obviously, there's a lot of things I don't know. But um, I've done a bunch of big stamps and just know that sometimes my embossing could be better if I'm not trying to be chintzy with it. All right. Now, I do want to do, do I want to do red again? I've already shown you red. I showed you blue, yellow. I don't think I need to do all of that. Let me show you the leaf really quick. Um, where's Granny? I don't want Granny up. Here we go. Old Olive. All right. So with your old, oh, I know what I was going to do. I wanted to show you how to do your background. Now, I'm thinking this is gold. I better stick with my Christmas theme on this one. So I am going to go ahead and get out my petal pink. Because I am going to want, just like this, I'm going to want this to be light. I don't know, maybe petal pink's not as good. Let me look at my paper. Let's do crumb cake. Now you're going to have to be really, really light with your crumb cake. In fact, I'm not going to use crumb cake. I think I'm going to use, I've got something called river rock it's old it's like a crumb cake but only a very very much more pale version and my blending pen let me pull you up here so that you're not claustrophobic and let me test it and make sure it's not weird okay yeah it's good all right so now i can just go in here and go over all of my background really quickly and easy because um, the colors I'm going to do here on these leaves and flowers is going to cover, you know, it really well. So I don't need to worry about, you could use a, yellow, a light yellow, um, a very, very, very pale version of Pool Party. You could use, um, that petal pink works really good with any browns particularly and um anything really that's going to be very very light in color so then then you have all the background edges already done and you don't have to use an uh, 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 use um an alcohol pen there and waste your ink so use the black the dark olive oil uh, olive oil <laughs> yes olive oil old olive just at the base and on those bottom stems. And one side, just one side of your stems. Okay, and then these stem, these flower buds, just the base of the flower bud. Um, this one, no, I wouldn't do too much on that one. This one, just a little bit. <laughs> it is, it's good. It's good to hear them working. This one I'm going to have to fix because I didn't get a whole image there. Okay, so let's see. Back ordered paper. We have got some, like this paper I'm using, this Bows of Holly, it is back ordered till September 5. But don't fear, um, that is going to come in. They will have plenty. And, uh, but if you want to wait until it's in, you can, but if you do wait, you better get your order in right away. Um, if you want it, if you snooze, you lose. I mean, that is just the reality. It's one reason I became a demonstrator is I was so sick and tired of not having the things that I wanted because I didn't know when things were running out. Plus, as a demonstrator, um, hobby demonstrator, you can order things a whole month earlier than everybody else, so you are never gonna miss out. Now, this is light old olive, so I want the whole stem covered with that. And then we're gonna just do the bottoms of the leaves. once I get to that part. Now, because it was um, embossed, I did, I 
fluffed up on my stem some. Got it a little darker than I wanted with my old, the dark old olive. Okay, so just the bottom of your leaves. Now you can blend though, you know. Go ahead and color, color, color to get that dark bit that you've already done. Color, 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 color to get it to blend in. Then go with this color, this light one, and do the upper stems. I was so grateful for when we went to um, Boise that I hadn't bothered to get my computer fixed. My computer should be running better. Somebody said I was having issues and I didn't think it was me, but now I'm thinking it was me because my computer totally stopped um, functioning while we were gone. And when I got to Boise, I told my son, he said, oh, bring it over. I'll, there's no need for you to spend money when I could probably fix it in five minutes, which he did. Oh man, they're running nice. Very nice. They are so quiet. They're running good. I mean, they haven't run this nice since they were purchased. So I am very, very grateful for that. That was nice to have that and not have to be without my computer for a couple of days. Plus, not having to pay that bill. Really nice. Okay, because these lines are embossed, um, it you know it feels a little weird. It's I'm going right on the top, but because it's embossed, it just slides right off. <laughs> just do it anyway, and it'll go to the side a little, and that's fine. It was so nice to see our grandkids. They are so cute. They are nice kids. Everybody always says that, but ours are, really. They see it seriously. All right. Also, when we went to, on our trip, we went to Mount Rushmore. Oh, man, that was so neat. Majestic. Looking at those mountains. It, you know, it's always amazing because I missed a spot, right? And I, oops, my fat tip's running out. I need to get a new, I think I do have a new old olive. Okay, now that that is done, now you want your other lighter color. And uh, so I'm using mint macaron because it's very light. Your um, soft sea foam, let's see if I can find that. It's actually maybe a bit better of a match. Here's light sea foam. It's um, a little more yellowy. Not a lot, but a little bit. So we'll use light sea foam. That actually might work better. It's a little darker than my uh, mint macaron, and that's one reason I don't use it. So I'm going back to light mint macaron. I don't know, maybe it's my imagination, but it seems like it's a little lighter in color. If you don't want a bluish cast with your olive um, coloring here, then just go over it again with some yellow and it'll fix that really nicely. I, our, our papers the last few years have actually had a mixture of olive and bluish greens. And uh, at first I wasn't fond of that, but I've gotten really used to it. So now I don't mind a, a bit. It, it's more of a mimicking what nature actually does give you. Usually there's combination of things going there. Check my tip. Do you see how um, the embossing does kind of come off onto your... It does. So you do want to... You do want to keep that clean. And one thing you can do is go to the store and I'm not going to show you the brand, but you can get an alcohol blending solution. That's what you want. And that actually will help clean that a little bit too. Okay, now it will take my ink away, so I have to be a little careful there because I don't want my color to disappear. I just need to clean off my tip a bit. Just a little bit because it's getting a little used. I've done a few of these. 
Oop. <laughs> Let's go with this one. There we go. All right. All right, good enough. Now, once you've done that, and that, I use that alcohol in the colorless. When you get this white, white, this is a colorless. It's called Color Lifter. That alcohol solution is what you want to just pour a bit on here if you're if you're not if you're not getting enough stuff off. Like if I wanted to clean that off, you know, if I rub this over it, it should clean off the areas that I flubbed. But it, it sometimes it doesn't because I just don't have enough of that alcohol on there. So you can just put a bit of that on the tip and it'll take care of it quite nicely. All right, now I am gonna take tiny bit of yellow. There, like that. Just a bit. Because so I think I didn't get quite as much just cleaning it, making sure it's clean. Now, I do have a lot of color on my embossing, which I can wipe off here in a minute, but I'm, I'm thinking about my flowers, and uh, I want to show you again what I did, since I'm going to just stick with the colors that I have here. Are they knocking or falling? I don't know. I thought I heard something there. All right, so just like this with your your cherry cobbler okay and then i looked at my petals the under ones are darker want the side that's the most down into the flower that's where you want to put a line on it that's going to make your petals stand out better so my centers are always going to be a little darker I can go center out or down. I, actually, if you're just stopping here, center out is best for speed. You're just going to have a little bit better control and speed is good because I'm not going anywhere near the edge. But now that I'm going near the edge, I need to start at the top and go down. And so I'm just looking to see, hmm, where are those petals that are going to be, wh where do I want a nice firm edge because there's a darker petal behind it or most of the petal is down under or you know just what you think is farther down the flower and then get out your uh, I used my um, light poppy parade the bullet tip and then just did this but not all the way to the edge, just mostly to the edge, but not all the way. Yeah, I'm cleaning off that embossing. And, um, you know, I think my, my uh, tuxedo black, I think, was easier on my pens than this is. Okay, then after I did that, I'm using petal pink. Actually, let's get the bullet point, the fat one, and do that whole flower. There, that, that's staying cleaner. I think um, because these are rather expensive, I think I would use a pencil instead. And you're gonna have less luck when you've embossed with this highlighter. all clean. Let's grab a pencil. Alright, so this is Cherry Cobbler pencil. And since I'm using pencil, you probably could do watercolor. I do have the pastels. I just, I'm not 
uh, I wouldn't do the pastels myself. And if you're gonna watercolor, you're definitely gonna have to have your, um, yeah, this is not working with the, with the, um, that is not working with the embossed. You're gonna need to use your, your, your pins. All right, and then once you've done that, you can take a tissue and if you rub it, it, it should rub off whatever ink is on top of your embossing. And then you should be able to see your, your embossing still. You know, I am not seeing it as good as it should be. I am not happy with that. I wouldn't do it this way. I, I think I would stick with the Tuxedo Black Memento. You're getting a lot better um, lines. You know, you can see them a lot better. So if you do this embossing, don't color it. <laughs> I would not color it. Just do Memento if you want to color it. Okay, well now we know, don't we? I was curious about that. All right. Now I did take out already the, um, I already used the, my stamps um, from the leaves, but I didn't do all, I didn't do all of them. I just did some. And I wanna show you how beautiful these are. Oh man, they are nice. So let me clean off my desk and um, that way we can see what we're gonna do here. I'm clean off my, some of my pens. I'm gonna use these green ones. Um, am I? No, I'm probably not, because this just goes with ink, so you don't even need to, to do that. And, oh, the Black Hills in, um, in South Dakota, oh man, they were beautiful. I hadn't seen them, Jack had seen them, and he wanted to show them to me, so on our trip, um, we went to Mount Rushmore, saw the Black Hills, oh man, we stopped at, I think it was... Now, I think wait, Rapid City was surprisingly pretty. I expected that to not be a great city. I don't know why. I think I remembered in the days of my youth, uh, Fred Flintstone going, you know, Rapid City, Rapid City, or was it some other city? I don't know. But anyway, he had a parrot that did that, and it was in a Flintstone <laughs> episode. And so I think that's partly why I thought Rapid City might not be. I know that sounds really stupid, but that's the truth. And um, it was really pretty. It was a big city, but it was bigger than I expected, and it was pretty. Now these leaves, oh man, look at those. I want to show you how to do that. Because those are gorgeous. You need three colors. Okay, so don't just do two colors. It's a two-step stamp. But do three colors with it anyway. You know, I knew that big plastic wasn't going to work on that, and it didn't. Didn't want really to use the flimsy one. Okay, so I'm going to do the big one just because it's easier to see. So start with the more solid one. Grab a little bit bigger block than what I had before. And then the bottom color that I'm using is... Hmm. I think actually it is Pear Pizzazz Stamped Off. Okay, so it's a stamped off version of Pear Pizzazz. Now you can do any, anything and just make sure you've stamped it off. And then we've got one. Oh, that's not looking all that nice. They're too, too mushy. Why are you doing that? Let me get another ink. That's inky. I think I put some more ink in it and it's too inky. Let's try, let's try our parakeet party. Um, it's not quite what I want, but let's try it anyway. Clean that off. I don't want to mess it up. Okay, so stamp it off because that is so vivid. And that's much better. There we go. That's it's not quite the color I want, but it's it's good enough. 
Okay, so now that I've done that, I'm gonna get my my um, old olive out. That's one color, a lighter color. Okay, then I'm gonna get my old olive out, putting this one away, and we'll get the next step. This is a step two stamp. We're gonna stamp this directly on it, but you need to do it like right over it. Right where everything is. And my paper, because I embossed it, is slightly crooked. <laughs> I mean, it's not crooked, but I'm going to stamp off. That seems pretty dark. Let's, let's do it again. I kind of did a bad impression there. Do you see this ink here? That means I did it badly. It, it, I rocked the stamp. I'm going to get my head down here. Okay, I got off a little bit, but boy, doesn't that look beautiful? Even, even off, it looks really good. Because it's photopolymer, you can see right through it, and then you can get it you get pretty close. If it's not perfect, it's going to be good enough. Okay, so I'm going to use this one again. This time I'm going to use our darkest green, which is that evening evergreen. Okay. Now some of them I could leave the way they are. Okay, so this is evening evergreen. That I can leave, but these darkest ones, I'm going to go one step darker here. That's too dark. That's off. There, that's better. I flubbed it though, so I'm gonna do that one again. So you want that evening evergreen is so dark, you do have to, you definitely have to stamp off to get that one. So I'm gonna leave that out. We're gonna go one more set of, let's see, let's do, let's do the little the little leaves, because I haven't done the little leaves yet. I've got plenty of the big ones. So the more solid one. Okay, on the little one. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with just old olive. We're gonna just do two colors and see what happens. We're gonna go old olive. I'm gonna stamp it off one time. And two times, okay? So we've, I just did it stamped off here on the side and then one and two. And I'm not gonna do the berries, so you'll have to, I think maybe I'll just show you what they look like, but I'm not gonna actually use the berries with this plan. Okay, so old olive just straight on without any stamping off with the second stamp, but I'm not going to ink it again, because remember this one was stamped two times. Oh, there's a lot of bags right there. It works better if your paper is flat. <laughs> this is, as you can see, very warped because of my embossing over there. All right, dark evergreen, but stamping off on that. That was way too dark the first time. There and there. Because of this, that flub, that, that leaf is not going to work. But. Now these look a little fuzzy because I didn't do it perfect. Um, I'm going to just give myself grace. If I wasn't, if my, if I could get my head right down here on it, I would have done it right. But I've got my head way up here and my hands way down here because I want to have my head in between so you can see what the heck I'm doing. So that is why they are a little fuzzy looking. The dies are going to cut them out. So you just take your die and you're going to just position it on there on your machine. Roll it through. It's going to cut that out beautifully and no sweat. These are going to cut out layers that you can layer on it. So um, I'm not using those 
I'm just going to use what I've already got cut out because we're going really long. I don't want to take the time to cut that all out. Um, I do just want to get this finished. So we've got this. I'm going to use the leaves that I've already done on it. I'm going to use this label that I've already done, even though it's a little torqued. I'm going to use it anyway. And all we need to do is put some more paper in here. Okay, got all this lovely paper. You can use all any of it that you want. You can do, um, you know, I mean, there's just so many, so many different. I think on these inside ones, I'm going to go ahead and just use these. What do you think? Yeah, I'm not sure. Let me look at my collection. Let's see what other ones we've got here. I do also have out, in case I wanted it to, I wasn't sure how it would look. I was thinking of using this behind the daisies. This is our, see how it's shiny, it's not pretty. This is the festive foils. It's kind of been, I think, overlooked. I think a lot of people haven't noticed the festive foils. So I might put the festive foils right here in the center, inside. I think that might be really pretty. All right. So we've learned some things at the um, Mount Rushmore. I know Jeff's been there before, but he still learned some stuff too. Like I didn't know it was Calvin Coolidge. Calvin Coolidge is the one we have to thank. Thank you, Calvin Coolidge. He was actually a really good president. And... Um, left-wing politics has been going on long enough that uh, you probably wouldn't have known that unless you were listening to people who give you both sides of the issue rather than just the one. So Calvin, Cool Calvin Coolidge, thank you for Mount Rushmore because it's really, really cool. Um, where is my ruler? I know I have one, but I think I lost it. It's here on the desk somewhere. Did it fall on the floor? I've got some. Oh, there it is. All right. So I think it was three and a quarter is what we wanted here. Three and a quarter by five and a quarter. Yes, yes, yes. So, oh, no, that's that side. I'm going to put this here. So we want it to actually be three and three quarters. Three and three quarters. Three and three quarters by five and one quarter. And that should go nicely here in the center. When we left, um, we went to um, Keystone, it's a little town right outside of Mount um, Rushmore. And um, we had some really good ice cream there. It was just a little sh stand, but oh man, it was. We had been. We paid for it. Oh man, it, we were happy to get back to Missouri and be able to pay a reasonable amount for our ice cream again because it was really good. But man, it was expensive. Okay, now I can put my little pocket on here. Let's um, do do some paper. We'll do the paper that we're going to do on the side. And because the, you see it has that nice mint macaron in it and all the other greens, we'll just use this. So we've got uh, three and th a quarter, I believe, yes. So three and one quarter and another three and one quarter and five and a quarter. And another five and one quarter. That one looks crooked, so let's turn it. Five and one quarter. Maybe it was just my eyes, but it looked like it might be a tiny bit crooked. And then let's see if I have enough for my pocket. I think I have just enough. Barely. So we'll go like that. And like that. Let's see if I need to trim it anymore. That's pretty good. Mm 
I'm doing pretty good. I think this is how much I have left of that paper <laughs> of both sheets. But my goal was to try to get it all used up. Now there's a little slit there, but that's okay. I'm gonna move with that. I got huckleberry. I got a waffle cone. Mmm, that's what we always get at Brahms. A waffle cone. They call it a double dip. That means you get two scoops. Mm, mm, mm. They had, we do not have huckleberry here. And so it was nice to be back in the West where I could get huckleberry. Huckleberry and black cherry. Mm, it was really, really good. On the way back, we stopped at a little ice cream shop in, in Wyoming, in Laramie, Wyoming. And um, I don't know how you could have flavorless ice cream, but they managed to. Maybe it was just the uh, flavor I got but I've never had flavorless ice cream before. It wasn't, it was not bad. I ate it all. It was, you know, okay. <laughs> I, as I was eating it, I was thinking, man, I, I don't want to spend my calories on this ice cream. I could have waited till I got home. Okay, there we go. Now that you do have to kind of keep pushing it down, make sure that's adhered really good. I don't want that pocket to come ripping up when somebody starts to pull things out of it. I want to make sure that's down really, really good. And then we put these papers on there. All right. And, oh, the Crazy Horse Monument. The Crazy Horse Monument was really cool, too. Thankfully, the guy, did, we were tired by the time we were getting to all of that. And I told Jeff, you know, look at that. There's a big, long walk <laughs> up there. And Jeff's not huge with walking anyway. I knew that would get him. And so we did not get out of the car. He said, you're not going to get out of the car that I'm not even charging you. And he just let us go in and drive around and look a, a little bit and then we left so that was all right we did miss the custer thing the little big horn i think that's supposed to be a really cool monument we missed that just fatigue you know it was a long long drive from missouri to nampa idaho and uh you get you have all these dreams of stopping everywhere doing everything and then reality sets in and you think you know i'm tired I'm going to put this little flower in here, but let's trim it up a little bit. It looks a little sad. Just that little bit that I chopped off. We'll cut this bit right here. Oh, I got to get going. We have been here a long... I knew this was going to take me a while, but I don't want to keep you too long. Okay, so cute, cute, cute. We could put a nice little label in there too. Um, but uh, for now, I am going to just glue it on. Anyway, so I was sorry that we missed the custard thing. And they have a lot of caves and rock things. And it's like, um, we'll go home and see that. We have so many caves and rock, cool rock climbing <laughs> things here in Missouri. It's, there's no shortage of that sort of activity here. So um, I did not feel the urge to tell Jeff, you got to do this. He want, Jeff wanted me to see the corn palace, which was very impressive. I must say, I've never seen so much corn on the side of a building. In fact, I've never seen corn on the side of a building. It was really cool. Um, surprisingly so. Now, if you want to do a belly band, that would be great, but you're going to have to make it pretty big, and I want to warn you that this is going to be problematic. So, I am going to go ahead and just do a, um, a ribbon instead of the belly band. I really like the belly band, but, uh, yeah, that's just not going to work today, so we will do a ribbon, if I can find perfect ribbon. And I've got some organza right here. Old olive. Oh, we've got a nice mint macaron on too, but I already cut this, so let's use this. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just tie this for now. Just so I can get everything placed and I'll figure it out 
figure it out here in a minute. Good, deck guys are back again. I don't know what they needed, but they must have needed something. Now let's use our white cardstock that I've got scraps of laying all over the place and do the little sentiment. We will do, let's do Christmas wishes. Um, joy and peace, I really like that, but we're gonna do Christmas wishes right there. And use my old olive, but I'm gonna stop that off. Cause boy, that's very inky and dark. Oh, actually, it's not too bad, so we'll go ahead and do it like here. So I know I have plenty of room all around to get my die cut clean without any bubbing. And then I am going to take this die right here and cut that. See how that fits so nicely? Very cute. And I could have used um, crumb cake as a background, but, you know, sometimes it doesn't work so good as far as my thinking when I do that. So I'm going to just cut this. I would normally bring this over so you could see what I'm doing, but this is taking a bit of time. I think we need to just get finished quickly now. I just cut it out for you. Over there. Glue that on to this. Right there. That's going to be positioned here sure it's over as much as it needs to be. And I could have run my ribbon through it. It's just that because I wet this piece down and it's not nearly as uh, solid. This edge was really nice and solid until I wet it down. So... of that I wouldn't probably have to do so much glue on it but I messed it up by wetting it down okay there we go and I didn't want to get my ribbon up. but now it can be tied and untied and still opened and then this is going to hold your ribbon on really well. Then we've got our nice leaves on the side here. And I want to cover up these because they didn't really turn out all that well, did they? It's because I wet it. If I hadn't wetted this, it, it laid really nice when I first did it. It looked great, but uh, I'm not liking it now. So we're going to just cover it up with one of my nice holly leaves here. A smaller holly leaf would be better. Yes, it would. Where's my holly? So maybe I'll cut out one of the little ones. I did do a little one that wasn't bad. No, both of those didn't turn out as nice. And I'm not taking the time to do it again. Let's check out one of the dark ones. Ah, that looks pretty good. I like that. I'll do that one. I'm just going to glue it on here. You could put a dimensional on, but I've got, I'm, I've got so much dimension already going here. I won't do have to do more. And then you can take your little leaves. They're gone again. I don't know what the heck they're doing, but I guarantee you they are not done. Okay, whatever. The Corn Palace. I'll think about the Corn Palace. That's in Mitchell, South Dakota. Um, I think, what, did we stay there at the Super 8 or did we go to Wall? The, Jeff wanted me to see Wall Drug, and that was really cool, too. Now, the reason I'm using our holly leaves is because they're very similar in shape to the leaves on this flower. And uh, and so I thought, well, you know, I think I think this will work if I do this. 
Yeah, let's try this one. Maybe that one instead. Yes, I think that would work. And if we do that, what we can do is even just put a tiny bit of this. This, no, I don't like that. How about if you did a circle under there? That might be nice, even of your red. Just do a little stitched circle under there. And this, I think that might look good. It might cover up a lot of your stitched circle is the problem. This is glued down really well now, so I can't really just pull it up and do it. Hmm, however, I could do a stitched circle on top. Let me grab a stitched circle. I know I've got one here. It's pretty likely to have one handy. Let me see, where are you? Real red. Shapes. Let's see what we've got. We could do that. We could do this stitched circle right there. What do you think? Yes, and then if you wanted to, you can make sure it's shutting. Yes, and it's covering it all. Then you can have a little sentiment here, too. Yeah, I think that's what we'll do. Very cute. Mitchell was cool. Oh, we got a we got a flat tie. We got a rock. Bad, really bad. <laughs> Big giant, you know. It ruined our tire. And um, I was just thank you God for having this happen. If it had to happen here, because it was like right outside of Mitchell, right. So we did wait a while for the tow truck, but finally when he came, came hauled us into. Walmart, I'm like, thank you so much, God, for Walmart. Walmart put it on, we got going, and we went to um, we went to Wall Drug in Wall, South Dakota. Actually, that Super 8 we stayed at must have been in Wall, because I think we stayed in Wall. I don't remember. We stayed in so many hotels. It was nice to get to the one in Nampa where we were done. Okay, isn't that cute? And then you're going to sh shove that in there. You can shove your notes in there. You can do whatever you want. This is just a, a design that um, is a very easy one to do. It um, it gives you a, a chance to use up some of your, your designer paper. If you've got scraps, you want to get the last of it used up. It gives you a chance to use a big stamp like this daisy stamp because that one that one is, let me tie that tighter. That is just a giant stamp. And it's real pretty, but unless you stamp, unless you emboss it on a solid color, like any solid color, black or blue, you're gonna do a lot of coloring, but it's worth it, it's cute. All right, so that is that. We, I showed you the set from Leaves of Holly. Let me get my my pieces all back together again so that I don't lose things. I um, When I get a set, I write the dies. If I'm keeping the dies in here, I write them on and I put the number. Because <laughs> how many times have y'all lost a die? So I need to always make sure I know how many are in there. So if that number it doesn't match what I actually have in there, I can look on the floor around me until I find that missing piece that I know is there somewhere. I just have to find it. And I will find it. Oops, I'm rolling all over the place. I didn't tell you everything about our vacation. Can you believe it? I thought I would, but I, oops, my camera doesn't like to be rotated. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, I'll try it again. Try it again. Don't freak. There we go. Oh, Andy, you are watching. It is so nice to see you. I didn't see any comments. If you commented, I am so sorry. Um, I don't know why I can see things on my phone and not, I'm looking at my computer right now and I don't see anything. It's not letting me see anything. And I'm very seriously thinking of going to YouTube um, instead of Facebook because of that. If I can't see anything, it just totally takes the fun away of having people join me 
when I'm doing this. It's just not, not good. But anyway, thank you so much. Thank you for sharing and being here with me, even if I didn't know it all the, all the time. It's nice to see the few that I did see pop in here and there. And um, I didn't tell you about everything that we saw on our vacation. So next week I am going to finish telling you what else we saw because it was, it was fun. We did have a very, very good time, but I do have to, I do, we, so I got four new tires. I needed, I thought uh, this year anyway, I was going to replace them anyway. So I was like, okay. And Walmart tires are very inexpensive. So that, that uh, I can't really count as an extra expense for the trip, but then we also have to replace our windshield, of course, because of the rock, that we big rock we picked up that hit our windshield. It always happens. So anyway, all those, those were the only things that happened that I didn't like. Everything else was really good. Had a great time. Good to be back. Um, I'm going to go peek at my deck now and see if they're close to finishing and why they're going in and out and not doing much. <laughs> And that's it. I hope you have a wonderful day. We are supposed to get some rain later. Uh, that could slow them down outside, but it'll be nice for me to see how the water's draining away from our new patio and deck. I haven't been able to see that yet, and I wanted to be here for the first big rain, and I wasn't. We were gone, so I'll be um, happy to get a little rain one of these days anyway, whether it's today or later, so I can be looking at that. And I will see you guys next Monday. Have a great rest of the week. Finish out your celebration strong. Get people to join you on your team or send them my way. I will be happy to take them. Bye-bye. <laughs> Oops. Bye. <laughs>